Hey everybody, welcome to Wingman's Hangar. This is episode 68. What is Wingman's Hangar? Well, it's an inside look at Chris Roberts' new epic space adventure game, Star Citizen. We take you inside a look at what's going on with the team and the development of this incredible thing. Let's get right to it, shall we? Coming up today, we have forum feedback with your questions and a couple of videos. We have new subscriber benefits. We're gonna tell people what they're gonna get as they subscribe, some really cool stuff. Sandy and the crew out there are working hard on that. And we have economy designer David Ladyman, and a first look at kind of how he decided to pin and paper, how we decided to pin and paper this thing, and uh, the first pass at it. It's kind of cool stuff. I think you'll like it. So what, how, what's going on this week? Well, Next Great Starship episode 11 happened last week. Ooh, getting really close. Take a look at that. We're, we're eliminating people as we go. And on June 7th, we're going to have that last final episode. So stay tuned. Get in there. Check that out. It's really, really fun. Also, we had 10 for the Chairman released by Chris on Monday. Always good to see what he's up to and get those questions answered directly from the man. Now, those are from subscribers. So again, get your questions answered by the man. Chris Roberts, become a subscriber. Uh, and this week, Sandy and the team share the latest benefits of being a Star Citizen subscriber. Take a look at this. Hi, everybody. I'm Sandy Gardner, VP of Marketing at Cloud Imperium Games. And this is Alexis Riddle. She is Customer Service Representative and also Subscriber Coordinator. And we are here because we have very exciting news for subscribers. We are launching Subscriber Flare, which is now going to be monthly instead of bi-monthly. And what else? And we are going to be opening our exclusive subscriber store. It is going live. And the first piece of Flare... It's going to be a calendar for your hangar, and it's very cool. It is very cool. We went through quite a few iterations from Segway to weird paper shredder to space pants. Space pants, <laughs> yes. Yeah. The Vault is our subscriber exclusive gallery where we upload uh, work in progress images, uh, things we didn't wind up using. It's just a place to see really cool stuff. It'll kind of give you a peek behind the scenes. So if you want to submit a question to 10 for the chairman, there is a sticky thread in the subscriber forum. You can just go to it and enter your question and hopefully it'll be chosen. Subscribers get VIP admission to all of our events. And one I'm organizing next is Gamescom, which is going to be awesome in Cologne. I'm looking for a venue for 1,500 to 2,000 people. So subscribers come in an hour early for that. So another subscriber perk is website beta access, where you get to test out um, parts of the site before we release them. Uh, we recently did this with uh, organization testing. So it's a pretty cool perk. So another perk is a test pilot badge which is a badge that you get for one day each month to fly a spaceship that you don't already have. So Imperators get some extra perks, like the Create a Pirate perk, uh, which we'll be releasing next year. You will get to create a story and submit it into the game. Here's the, the first printed one that, uh, that we did for the Imperators. Everyone else, including Centurion subscribers, uh, have access to the softbound version. It's the same size. It's got the same content. Both of them are... 300 some odd pages long, covering 650 pages of jump point. Another cool perk for Imperators is a Vandal test pilot, where Imperators will get to test a Vandal once it's in-game. Imperators will get two of each piece of hangar flare, starting with the calendar. Your subscription goes towards helping the game, it goes towards video production, it goes towards creating a higher level of engagement for all you guys who subscribe, and also some merchandising swag that we are getting up online. You will finally have a store. And without you guys, we wouldn't be able to do all of this video production and uh, all the other cool things that we do. Very, very cool, and, and many thanks to subscribers. We are certainly very thankful to you and all you've done for, uh, for Star Citizen. And now it's time for... Th 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 forum Feedback. Hey, Rob. Hey, Eric. How are you today? I'm fantastic. Are you fantastic? I heard you're going to do your Dudley Do-Right voice today. I, I'm just glad you remembered to bring me this week. Yeah. <laughs> really um, important. It was tough. I was like, well, I don't know. Do I bring him this week or do I leave him at home? <laughs> you know, leave him back in the office. Keep the joke going. Yeah, like... I'm sorry. I really apologize. For those of you who don't know, last week we, uh, I, I was in such a hurry to get down here. I and I forgot Rob, so uh, he had to come down on this, his own. This was my response to you forgetting me. Yeah. Where'd you get that? This is from Roger Bucks. One of our lovely citizens has sent me my very own, this is bullshit, coffee mug. That's nice. Can we say cool. that on TV? No, no, we're, and we're on YouTube, but we can, um, we can certainly redact it. <laughs> Excellent. Shall we get right to it? Let's get right to it. All right. From Captain Pancake. 
Will we be able to toggle between first person and third person view in combat? And if so, how would you make it even for those who don't want to use third person view at all? Hmm, this is a this is a hot button topic. You know, you get a lot of this in the forums. The ever raging debate over first person and third person. And the real crucial thing, I mean, having played a lot of the dogfighting now, it is very difficult without the radar. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're in third person, you get no radar. You get no HUD. Right. You can see a little more, not as significant, significantly easy for me to say, uh, as you might think. But yeah, you lose the benefit of, of all your equipment, and that's really crucial. So. Yeah, you know, and there's 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 uh, UAVs flying around these days that, that give you third person views of battlefields. So why 900 years in the future wouldn't we have the ability to kind of have a trailing camera or something? Plus, we want you to see how pretty the ships are. And they're space gorgeous. As well. I mean, they're beautiful. Yeah. They are. They are. They are. From Sebastian Noir. I was wondering if hangars can come under attack or not. I see some asteroid hangars, and one would think you could blow them up. And if so, will they have automated systems to repel invaders? Can they be boarded? Mm. Quick answer on that is no. But uh, I think the, the meaning behind it is your ships are safe. I mean, right. it's, uh, when they're in your, your personal hangar, your starting hangar, then your ships are safe, I think is the, the reasoning behind that question. There'll be plenty so. of other places to board and to fight mm -hmm. and to... to uh, Oh yeah, but once you—I mean, think about that for a moment. What if you're offline and somebody can just attack your hangar and you come back and all your stuff's gone? <laughs> just that one little ornament hook lying there on the floor. Yeah, and that everything would be. Else is gone. That would be annoying. It would be <laughs> like you know, I, I'm part of this game and all of a sudden my stuff's gone. I'm not enjoying that. So that's the no. From Roger V, and I'm not sure it's Roger Five, like Roman numerals, dropping hmm. the knowledge there, or Roger V. Just wondering how we identify ships in the verse. Will we be shown the names of characters in the ships? Or will we just see a ship ID and our computer will tell us who owns that ship? So, you'll, uh, you'll definitely see a ship ID. Now, we've already talked about those possibly being spoofed, so you know that might not be accurate information. Whether or not you see who's inside it right away, it will depend on scanners most likely. Okay, so. that's cool. Because I know there's a lot of people that you know want to do some things to other people's ships, and you know who you are. So let's get right, oh, our first video in a while from Commander Cosmo. Take it away. Greetings, wingman. Commander Cosmo here. Dr. Orbit and I have been monitoring your primitive transmissions for some time now, and we have a question. Will we be encountering alien technology so vastly beyond comprehension that we will have no clue even what it is, let alone how it works? And if so, can we sell it on the black market? You might not see us, but we will see you in the verse. Wow, that was cool. That's, that's, that's pretty that's, clever. Yeah, it's, you know, it was a much longer video. We, we trimmed it down so that it fits in the show, but... It was still a pretty interesting question, so what do you think? Yeah, so um, the alien technology thing, I mean, if, if you think about it, is how interesting is it to find something you can't do anything with? But, <laughs> but um, we're still discussing exactly what we might let players find out there, and that will evolve over time, too, so, you know, stay tuned. Yeah, that, that's it's kind of a cool thing, though, so, so anything cool, obviously, we'd, we'd be interested in doing at some point. From Blaster, it's been said that the Banu do some trading with the Vanduul. Does that mean we will be able to buy Vanduul ships and equipment from the Banu? Ooh. Hard to say, isn't it? Mm. So we had wondered about that. We had a lot of people wonder about that. What happens if my, my scythe that I bought gets damaged? Where do I get parts for it? Well, that's a fair point. Go to the Banu. They might just have some. They might have some parts. Not sure they'll have ships, because I doubt that the Vanduul go around selling their ships. But... Never can tell. There might be one popping up here and there. Who knows? So Never gonna, can tell. Right, right. So most, but 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 they definitely for, to get parts for the scythe. That's a very very good point. So from Trailblazer, it is already said that players can run factories in Star Citizen, but will we be able to have our own dealerships for collected goods? Hmm. We'll definitely have ways for players to sell their stuff. Right. I mean, there may be several ways, but we we've, we've talked about stores as part of that. Yes. Okay. Cool. Well, there you go. From Lord Pork Sword. I don't know <laughs> about that. When version one of the Dogfight module is released, will it run off a primary server, say in the US, or will additional regional servers go live as well, so us Aussies can enjoy some low ping? Low ping. Um, so, low yeah. ping from Lord Pork Sword. 
It's a great <laughs> name. I mean. um, so <laughs> we're going to be spinning up the dogfighting module in the cloud. Yeah. So it will be distributed globally. Everyone can play. Right. So exactly. So in case you didn't know, a lot of other MMOs will do like they'll have set servers and data centers around the world, and however close you are will affect your ping, where ours is actually going to spin up shards or spin up servers, clusters in different areas around the world based on where people are. So um, at least that's the, how it's going to work. From Renaissance, Renaissance Angel, how much content will a player who only wants to engage in PvE be able to experience compared to others who are more willing to combat other players? Will players be forced to fight each other in more lawless systems regardless of their preferences? That is a good question, and we've had you know similar questions before, yeah. but it's it's a pretty hot topic. The so. slider is a constant yeah. topic of discussion. It is, on the forums. it is, and fair enough. So yeah, um, the the slider is a preference. It is not an absolute. So you can't, no matter how far you take that slider, you can never prevent PvP content. Unless entirely. you're running your own server. Well, if you're running your own server, then you can do whatever you want right, right, to right. some extent. Right. Um, so there will always be plenty of content for both types of players. It doesn't it's not going to favor one over the other. Um, we treat everything equally, or try to when we're building the game. But when you do get to lawless areas, there's certainly danger of you running into players. Um, in, in more, shall we call, policed areas, mm -hmm. even if someone were able to occasionally jump you and will steer it away if you don't like PvP, um, they'd be constantly hunted and you know, free targets for PvPers everywhere at that point. Right, so, well, that's a good point. Cool. From, oh, this one's gonna, this is. <laughs> Nucha Misikamen. Nucha Misikamen. Wow. I don't know if that's right or not, and if it isn't, I sincerely apologize. <laughs> There's confusion regarding FPS modules cover mechanic. How is it going to work? And will we have prone stances? Thanks for making our dream come true. Well, that's pretty cool. That's a nice You're way welcome. to end the question. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's... that's right. Um, so I went straight to the people we won't name and the redacted folks. Yes, those folks. It's like the worst kept secret in <laughs> in. Uh, <laughs> and so our cover mechanic is it's it's sort of a combination of, of many things. There is a snap cover, you know, a go to this place to jump into cover. There will probably have some auto version of that as well, where you can just sort of assume that you're going to duck into cover. We try to cover all, all levels of skill. But when you're in cover, you can move around. It's not, you know, you're not stuck in a position. Right. So you can move in cover and, and look around in cover and all the things you'd want to do to get full situational awareness. What about prone? Prone! Yes, we're going to have prone. Prone is a thing. It's a thing. Even in zero G. Even in zero G. That's right, right. <laughs> From Hellstorm, I was curious if you could elaborate on the level of economic gameplay available. While the space combat portion looks awesome, yes it does, I have my concerns that there isn't a lot of depth to the economic side of the game. Woo, well Rob, what do you think of that? <laughs> if only you could see. I know, right? Um, and we'll have more on that later today. We'll, we'll be talking a little bit more about the, yeah. uh, the economy um, with uh, David Ladyman coming up here. So The really simple, elegant answer that Chris gave to this question was, we give every part of the game equal attention. <laughs> there is... Just because dogfighting is coming to you first right. doesn't mean it's the only focus. So the economy will get plenty of love, and it will be very in-depth. I mean, we're running one of the most complex simulations I've ever seen in a game. So well, there will be content. Cool. Ooh, our old friend Kin Shadow's back. Well, I was recently reviewing the specifications behind the Caterpillar and had a couple of questions. Given the modular nature of it, several of my colleagues have pointed to the tabs in the front being indicative of a possibly stacking architecture. Can you confirm that the length of the Caterpillar can potentially be modified by these modules and that you could potentially add things like weapons hardpoints or special ramming attachments? Thanks, Kid Shadow. Out. That's, that's just awesome. That is really good. Now, welcome his, back, Kin Shadow. I know I love it. He broke his Caterpillar. Yeah, I know. So what's so? What about variants and stuff? And um, I don't envision that you're going to have like a 18 kilometer long caterpillar. In the <laughs> game. Uh -huh. But he was trying. Yeah. Um, but we have talked about the, 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 there are definitely distinct pieces that go in those modules already. Mm -hmm. We've already talked about that. So there will probably be varying arrangements of those available. 
I'm not sure if we're going to just let you stack them infinitely, though. Right, you can't have like... That, but that was pretty cool. Well done. I really enjoyed that video. So, And now it's time for William Wallace with this week's Most Valuable Post. Don't you, don't you mean William Lewis? Freedom! Hi, everybody. I'm lead moderator Will, and I'm here to bring you this week's MVP. This week's MVP is Talon86, who's created a thread talking about one-liners in the verse. A couple of my favorite are leave nothing behind except for carnage and vandul husks, and nothing in this life is certain except for permadeath and space taxes. So thank you very much, Tylenol86. You're this week's MVP. Thanks, Will. Border's gonna board. <laughs> hey guys, what's up? David and Rob, you ready? Yes, sir. You guys ready for all this? No. So, as you may know, this is David Ladyman. He is working with us on, uh, well, many things, actually. So, uh, well, this is kind of subscriber week. We're talking a little about subscribers. So, what do you do for subscribers, David? What do I do for subscribers? I uh, put together Jump Point every month, mm -hmm. and uh, that's about it. That's four to six pages. That's about right? it? Yeah, the four to six, four pages, to six pages of pages, Jump Point. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> so that sort, of, that sort of was funny because that, that actually we initially said it would be, I think it was four to six pages. And what happened? <laughs> it got bigger. Not, did you just forget the dash and thought it meant 46 four pages? Six. Yeah, 4 six. Yeah. Sure. Okay. But it's, I'll I haven't you, heard that one before. Yeah, I know, right? But I'll, be, but I'll bet, that, well, they don't get better. Yeah. <laughs> You've known me long enough to know that. You find the, you find the best you can reach to. And hey, border's going to board, baby. Yes. <laughs> so the thing about it is, right, though, is so you do Jump Point every month, and it's yes, one sir. of the best things subscribers get. And I see you brought some books along, which are pretty cool. We've kind of showed those before. Yep. They're, they're really, really neat. And those are the hard backs and the soft backs, and those mm -hmm. are some of the things they're getting. And they seem to be appreciated. People really like that. That's one of the biggest benefits to being a subscriber. It's... I like it. Yeah, well, I bet you do. It, it's a lot of fun to put it together. It's it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's a lot of hard work, too. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, right. But it's a lot of fun just to be, I have a front row seat, uh, and, and I can walk into the room and say, I get that front row seat because I'm doing jump point. Right, that's pretty cool. <laughs> and it's, and it's real, it is. I, I get to go up and talk to anybody who's involved in this game and say, okay, you get to tell me about this. And I get to see the ships as they're being made. It's it's neat. Well, that's very very cool. So you're old school with us. You go back to origin with actually all three of us on the set, and also you, Michael, I believe, right? That's right, origin system. That's right. So we all came from origin, and you're you've we've kind of sucked you more and more into Star Citizen as we go. You're not just working on um, Jump Point any longer, or the brochures which you also put together. Yep. Um, you're also doing some of this economy research, and we've got a little bit of this here. We, we got, you know, we'll look at Michael run some B-roll or run some roll behind us while we talk occasionally. And so you guys did an, you're doing the economy. What are you, what are you doing with that? Well, I'm not doing what we announced at the front of the show, which was design the economy. Yeah. Oh, well. We're designing <laughs> some of it. Yeah. There's a lot uh, of pieces I, I moving am, here. I, I am able to, to discuss it with folks as other folks are designing the economy. Uh, but what... I specifically am responsible for is to find a way to make it into a board game so that as the economy is being built, we can simulate it on a board game before we spend hours and hours programming it all. And we got little ships and pretty counters, and uh, you're looking at two of the star systems uh, right. there. And Gotta have the dice. Everything's better with dice. So you, know, you guys did a run, you get a run through. How, how, and now you did what, like 20 systems randomly generated? And how did that go? How did it go? How, how did it play? Uh, it was <laughs> 20 systems that we picked, actually. Right, right, right. Okay, fair <laughs> enough, sorry. Uh, it, it, was a first, it, it was a first run through. Any, right. any first play test is gonna be real skimpy. And well, now, it was that. Now, Chris is really big on pen and paper. I know, you know, from years of conversations and everything we've ever done together, is we've papered things out first. Why, why, don't you, why is it important to pen and paper these things first, to make a board game, essentially, before we... You know. To save time. To, to see... As, as long as we can actually simulate the computer game with the board game. Right. If, if we don't, then we've lost... We're spinning our wheels. 
Uh, but as long as we can simulate the computer game with the board game, then we can get a much better idea of how the computer game will run. And we will know, guess we need to emphasize this more in the computer game, No, we need to stop doing that. And we find the fun things, we emphasize the fun. I mean, it's, it's what you do in any way of making a computer game. You find the fun things and you make them important and more fun. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, and then you minimize the things that are just right. that are just like noise, so to speak. So yep. now did it go the way you thought? I mean, because every time you go into one of these things you think it's gonna play a certain way and sometimes it doesn't. Did this one go how you thought it would or it pretty much went the way I was expecting. We had uh, the the design department here in Austin is uh, they're First victims. Yeah, first victims. First but, victims. Uh, <laughs> they're very happy to spend two hours playing a board game rather than sitting at their desk working sure, on things. Sure, sure, sure. Um, and it went pretty much as expected. It was, we're as a first test, it's still working out the, okay, does this work to simulate the computer game? Sure, sure. But uh, in fact, as soon as we get out from here, we're gonna go and do another one. Round two. Uh, round two, and I have refined some of the rules especially through discussion with, with other folks who are playing. And we're, we'll get closer to the game, and we'll get, it's incremental. It's, we won't have a breakthrough, I wouldn't expect. But from week to week, we'll get a better and better idea of how the board game works to simulate the computer game, and from that, how the computer game can be made better. So like once you get to, with these 20 systems, once you get to where you're like, okay, this is really fun. I think we found the emphasis on what we need to push or, or pull or put into the economy that makes it fun. Then you do, you then scale and continue so that you find out whether if it works in 20, does it work in 100? Does it work in 40? You know, because there's challenges. Some things, as they go, what's the next step after that? You, go ahead. At that point, I would hope that we'll be at the point of moving it all into engine. Right. And so then it'll be much easier to spin up to 100 systems right. because it'll be faster to generate the data. And we are doing the economy simulator as well as far as uh, yeah. the electronic version of said things. So. We just can spin up features a lot faster in this methodology than they can. On, in fact, yeah, I was going to say, rather than taking this 20 systems and going to 100, probably the where we will spin up is to go into more detail on the economic systems. Uh, sure. This. Last week, this week, we're not going to try to include insurance in it at all. Right. Uh, but there's there's other parts of the there's lots of other parts of the economy that won't go in for several more weeks. Okay. Uh, and so as we get more confident, as we get a better handle on how it's playing, as we get that feedback we need to know on how the computer game works, we'll start adding the other things that are in the economy that just aren't there right now. So your degree is mathematics, correct? Mathematics and linguistics. So that's a pretty, that's a pretty unique degree to have. Um, different sides of the brain, generally speaking. Generally, yeah. Yeah, but not with you. So that's good. That that helps us in this. So I want to thank you for stopping by. Sure. I appreciate the update. This is you know what what goes on. We have Dave and Rob here. It's going to be really fun. I'll sit in on the economy simulator later today. Like um, it's fun. That's yeah, let's. That's it. Well, that's it. Look, it's a game. Let's make it fun. Aha! Right? I knew you exactly. did something. <laughs> so coming up this week at CIG, we have episode twelve of the next great starship. It, fantastic. Yeah, it looks like a final asset to me. I really like it. I don't really have many criticisms at all. I think they're doing a really great job. God, the modeling is fantastic. Wow, it's very exciting coming to the conclusion of the next great starship. I can't wait to see who wins. Uh, some extremely talented teams out there. So tune in this Friday for the next episode of The Next Great Starship. It's really going to be fun. I want to thank subscribers and pledgers. Without you, there is no us. We're not able to make this game. Um, can't tell you how, how cool and honored we are to be part of Chris Roberts' vision. It's incredible. Love every minute of it. Uh, also, I still can't get over this. You guys are incredibly generous. Take a look at this. Wow, wow, wow. We got something here that says, Dear Wingman and the Austin office, first I want to thank everyone for letting me be part of the Sadaball process. My pitch design didn't win, but it was still fantastic to be part of the process. He's a smuggler, apparently, and he also brews beer. <laughs> I wonder what's in here. What sort of contraband would be available for those of us who play a game who want to sit on the dark side of the economy? Well, definitely beer. So let's see what we got. Wow, look at this. Woo! 
It's wow. Smith. How do you say that name, Rob? Holy crap. I don't think it's holy crap. <laughs> how, do you, how do you say that name? Smeeches? Smeechy? Smeechy's Unfiltered Arachnophobia. Arachnophobia. Thank you very much, Smeechy. All right, woohoo! Howdy, CIG Austin. You guys are drowning in good liquor down there. I hope you'll enjoy this brand new CD from my band, Thirsty, Thirty Spokes. Sorry, not Thirsty Spokes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well, you code or with a cold one later after, after work. <clears throat> Excuse me. From veteran backer and subscriber, Gabe Degnatel, a.k.a. Jagannath? Jagannath? Yeah, say that real fast. <laughs> Jagannath! Yeah. And here's the Thirty Spokes. CDs. Cool. Music. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Your generosity is amazing. Uh, thank you guys very, very much from the bottom of our heart. We, the teams across the globe at all the different studios appreciate your generosity, so thank you. Uh, also, if you want to find out what goes on and when we post videos up, join our YouTube channel. You'll get an email. You'll find out exactly what goes on. When it happens, you'll be first, which we all know on the internet is important to be. Um, submit your questions on the RSI forum. We'll put something up every thread every week, and we'll say, what, you know, what do you want to ask them forum feedback? And that's how we pick the questions for this show. It's usually chosen by Ben or one of the other community managers in, uh, in the Santa Monica office. And if you want to join, join Wingman's Hangover, it's about 30 minutes after this show. Now, it used to be about 15, but I've got a meeting now. So it's usually about noon central time. We'll do a little quick update, a little informal talk back and forth, maybe some Skype channels and the chat roll on our website. So that's Wingman's Hangover, about noon, noonish, right around there. And, and we'll usually type in when we're going to get there from the meeting. So. And remember, if you want your stuff featured on Wingman's Hangover, send it in. We just might use it. And after Mike bumps through that thing on the corner over there, which you probably heard on the mic, hey guys, where are we going to see him? In, In the, the verse. verse. I think I think esports driving, especially games like like my game, to be you know more competitive and competitive in different types of ways is very exciting right now. Uh, one thing I'd, I'd like to add to that is that I love StarCraft too as well. Um, but what I'm really excited about is games being designed for esports in the sense that there is a almost a faster panel or a or a simultaneously view panel where you're watching a, a game live that you can control the camera, you can control the camera. So in game you can uh uh something to do. Yeah, I tell you that's better than the reading and giving out it's kind of why I have to talk about what kind of a real Okay, I think you can hear me now, right? Yeah. All right. Using a game like Star Citizen, you have to put a lot more thought into how do we contextualize all of this and make it something that's a consumable, enjoyable viewership experience. Um, but yeah, I think that that's driving a lot of game making right now.